In a quiet, shadowy room, a dark master sat upon his throne. His most faithful minion had failed him. If cloaked Kaijin could not get the job done, he could not trust anyone else to do it for him. If you want something done right, you must do it yourself. Meanwhile, in a secluded section of the World Forest, Dan Cujo and Saba were packing up camp from the night before. Dan always seemed to have trouble fitting his tent, sleeping bag, and other supplies in his worn-out backpack. I really wish I could just make this stuff appear and disappear like with my relics. Is there anything I can do to help? Not unless you're going to sprout arms anytime soon, Saba. Not likely. It wasn't long after they had packed up camp when a dense fog started to roll in. It looks like it might rain. We'd better get a move on. Saba floated alongside Dan as they trekked across the familiar forest floor. But today, Saba could not get a strange feeling out of his head. He thought that it might just be fatigue from the constant fighting, but Saba had never experienced fatigue like this before. He felt like they were being followed, but could not understand why. Kaiju were usually not subtle when it came to attacking them. The only kaiju that ever watched them from afar was Skunk Ape, and he meant them no harm. The fog around them reminded the saber of the mist that brought cloaked kaijin to them many times. But the phenomena were too different, not to mention that cloaked kaijin had passed. Dan, do you sense anything? Sense anything? No, I can't even really see anything through this fog. Is everything okay? I do not know, Dan. Just keep your eyes open. Our heroes continued onward for a while, until they saw a strange sight in the distance. Through the fog, they could see the form of a man standing with his back to them. They could not make out his features through the weather, but he was definitely humanoid. Look, Saba, you see what I see? Indeed. A kaijin, perhaps? I don't think so. Looks human to me. Do not let your guard down, Dan. Dan was confused, and yet relieved to see another human. There were usually only two types of life forms he encountered in the world forest. Kaiju and Kaijin. It had been so long since Dan had seen another human being. Hey there! Are you lost? What are you doing, Dan? Normal humans never venture this deep into the forest alone. They might need help. Dan, this could easily be a trap. What if they attack us? Then I'll fight them off like I do every day. But I don't think that this is... Dan was interrupted when he saw the shape in the fog slowly turn to look at them. Before our hero could speak to the stranger, they pointed something through the fog. <laughs> Before Dan even knew what happened, Saba had flown in front of him and taken the blast. The sentient saber was launched back into a tree and fell to the ground with a thud. Saba, no! Dan rushed to Saba's side. Luckily, the saber was merely rattled. Oh, thank goodness you are all right. I'm fine, Dan. I was taking laser blasts before you were born. Quickly, though. You must transform. You're right. Toku change. Dan Cujo spun the golden Toku changer on his wrist, transforming him into the collective hero, Toku King. Our hero scooped up Saba and took a battle stance as the figure walked through the fog and revealed himself. The dark warrior was humanoid, as expected, but every inch of his body was covered in black armor, making it impossible to see the being's face or determine if he was indeed human or not. The armored pattern on his face was skull-like, and his red pinhole eyes glowed faintly. The gun that he shot Saba with was covered in twisting pipes and had an empty slot that seemed like it should be holding a clip. The dark being took no offensive or defensive stance. He merely stood there and stared at them. 
What do you want with us? Are you human? Kaijin? I was told that you were a great warrior. So far, that seems to be an incorrect observation. In an attempt to surprise this new foe, Toku King darted to the left and brought Saba down onto the dark being. Sadly, to our hero's shock, the shadowy humanoid caught the saber at the guard and sent purple bolts of energy into Saba and Toku King himself. Gah! No! Toku King staggered back and summoned the dragon dagger, dual wielding the two blades. He swung wildly at the dark stranger that was repeatedly blocked by the being's swift movements. The new foe blasted Saba out of Toku King's hand, but our hero continued to assault him with the dragon dagger. While Toku King kept the armored being distracted, Saba floated behind their foe before planting himself in the ground and firing his eye beams into the dark figure's back. Their foe stumbled, and Toku King slashed him across the chest with his dagger. The armored assailant staggered for a moment, before regaining his composure. Clever. It is possible that I underestimated you. The dark figure took an offensive stance that allowed him to keep an eye on both of our heroes. Toku, change. What did you just say? Suddenly, the dark being's armor began to shift. More armor spread over his shins and forearms, while freeing up areas like his joints, allowing him to move even faster. A visor slid down over his face and locked into place, completing the transformation. How did he... But before Toku King could even finish the thought, the dark figure grabbed the dragon dagger and punched our hero with such force that he instantly released his weapon. Toku King smashed through several trees before crashing into some old ruins. The masked warrior approached our hero with the dragon dagger still in hand. Toku King had gotten onto his knees when he felt the barrel of the fiend's gun pressed firmly against his helmet. I started my day with the intention of killing you. Your kind are not what this world needs. Do you really believe that you can return this planet to what it once was? The world is dominated by kaiju, and it is a disaster. Biodiversity cannot be maintained in a world covered in a single ecosystem. The kaiju destroy everything they see, sometimes even each other. But humans are even worse. Human beings destroyed this planet and allowed these monsters to take over. So-called heroes like yourself do not fight for truth or justice. You fight to maintain the status quo of human oppressors. That is why I came to destroy you. Toku King looked up at his assailant through his visor. If you really believe all that, why not pull the trigger and get this over with? The dark figure stared at Toku King for a moment, before answering. There is a balance that must be enforced. Fighting you reminded me of something. When no heroes existed, Kaiju ran rampant. But too many heroes causes problems as well. The Kaiju prospered even more in the collateral that was brought about by defeating one simple monster or alien. You are the last of your heroic kind. If I kill you, it could tip the scales in the monster's favor. So here is what I am going to do. I'm going to take this dagger and your spark dolls. You are gathering too many artifacts too quickly. Every so often, I will come and remove some of them. If you grow too powerful too fast, you could destroy the balance that I am working so hard to maintain. I will even leave Saba with you so that you can find more of these artifacts for me. 
I now realized that his sentience would make him hard to control. It is much easier to let you two keep finding relics for me than it is to keep sending Kaijin to steal him from you. Toku King looked up in surprise. Was this the being that sent cloaked Kaijin after him? Now, in order to prove to me that you accept these terms, you will hand over the spark dolls you stole from my underling. Toku King hesitated for a moment, and then summoned the three spark dolls. The dark warrior plucked them from his grasp and looked them over. Dark Lost Zero, EX Red King, and Hyper Zeton Death Scythe. All accounted for. Thank you for your cooperation. Before you go, tell me, who are you? I am everything that you are missing, Dan Cujo. I am all the power that you could not control. I am Toku Dark. With that, Toku Dark pulled the trigger on his gun and sent a barrage of steam shooting out of the barrel. When the steam cleared, there was no trace of the dark foe to be found. Saba flew into the rubble to check on Toku King. He had kept his distance in case his presence would have caused Toku Dark to change his mind about killing Dan. Toku King released his transformation, returning to his human form. Are you alright, Dan? Dan Cujo struck the ground in frustration as rain began to fall on him. <sighs> For the first time in his heroic career, Toku King had been defeated. Toku King was created by Paul Kelly Jr. Starring Paul Kelly Jr., Samson West, and Jesse Booth. Edited by Paul Kelly Jr. Written by Paul Kelly Jr. Executive Producer Chris Winter. Music by Letterbox. Special thanks to Ian McNeil, Cameron Gowen, Eddie Chang, and all our donors and listeners. Please follow the links in the podcast description and donate to support the show. <laughs>